2024 and you have decided to purchase a PlayStation 3. You want to know what model you need, what games you should pick up, or maybe you already own a PS3 and you're just looking for some game suggestions. Either way, I've got you covered because today in our next buying guide, we're setting our sights on the PlayStation 3. Out of all of my old systems, this is one I still use frequently. It's because it's PlayStation, meaning there's a lot of exclusives there and many of those games are still stuck on this platform. In a lot of ways, I think for retro game collectors, the PS3 is one of the most valuable systems you can collect for. And when we saw what happened with the PSN getting torn down on the PS3 and Vita, only temporarily, the prices when they skyrocketed for particular games I'm gonna highlight today, they really went up. I think now's a good time, just like with the Xbox 360, to start collecting for your PS3. Of course, right now, as we're recording this video, there are rumors lingering about PS3 emulation being done on PlayStation 5. I worry a little bit that it's gonna be something like what they're doing on PS2 and PS1 and PSP, where you're not gonna have that true backwards compatibility, being able to put the disc in and play whatever game. So I personally still think owning a PS3, if you've got the space, you've got the money, is worth your time and i hope to break down why today so let's start off with the models what system should you pick up well there's over 20 models for the playstation 3 a egregious amount that's because sony went through a lot of reworks with this system remember when they first announced it it was at 600 and they told you to get an extra job to afford it and so naturally xbox 360 sprinted out the gate thanks to PlayStation's blunder. Now they managed to crawl back into the race, but it was thanks to a lot of these revisions to the consoles. They're really defined under three umbrellas. The first is the original model, the fat model, if you will. This ranges from 20 to 160 gigabytes. It's easy to smudge on the top. There's a power switch on the back and all of these models do support PS1 backwards compatibility. However, the one that people often seek out is the CECHE model, which was the last to support backwards compatibility for the PlayStation 2. For those who are wondering on a more specific level, this was the Metal Gear Solid 4 bundle. Now, according to Sony, this was due to them no longer packing the system with any semiconductors from the PS2, and therefore only software emulation could be achieved. Also, according to Sony, is that PS1 could always be achieved because of said software emulation. Anyway, this would be done because of the slew of HD collections headed toward the system that I'll tell you about in a little bit, and they wanted to sell you those games and not have you play your old ones. Anyway, that back compat model is the most expensive PS3 model you can buy to this day, ranging from $270 to $320, according to my research. Otherwise, any original PS3 model you get within this family ranges from $70 to $110. It's a good place to go if you're really on a tight budget but want a PS3. Then there's the slim model, my personal favorite. It has a matte top. The memory space ranges from 120 to 320 gigabytes. The power button is now on the front instead of the switch on the back. And it also runs a lot quieter and reportedly runs cooler. This one will run you about $70 to $110. It's the easiest to get. It's the cheapest to get as well. And then the last model introduced in 2012 is the super slim model. This one is plastic. It's very cheap looking. It has a door that opens at the top. Beware your dusty environments. I'll warn you about that now because obviously electronics already attract a lot of dust and you have this door that just opens and closes and you can get a lot of dust in your system. So just keep that in mind if you're looking at the super slim. Some people really like the approach that they had here because each PlayStation gradually got smaller. Hence the name Super Slim. It's not a lie because when you look at the original PS3 and how big it was and then the Super Slim, they really managed to squeeze this thing down. There's either a 250 gigabyte model or a 500 gigabyte model, and you'll find these on eBay going for about 120 to $130. If you ask me personally, if you've got the bread to spend on the backwards compatible PS3, I would actually warn you against it. Number one, they're getting really old. I worry a little bit about the hardware inside there, although PS3 is very durable. But for me, if you're gonna spend that much, you may as well either A, just buy a slim PS3 and get more games for your PS3, or B, Buy a PS2 and a PS3. I know that's coming from me, a game collector. I'm a little biased here, but I think the PS2 still has a lot of value as well. 
but also a lot of PS2 games were re-released on the PS3, including some of the greatest classics on PS2 as we're gonna get into with those collections. So I personally say, budget it out how you'd like to. I like the PS3 Slim the most with the matte top. You don't have to worry about smudges. It's durable and has good cooling. It's small enough to really fit anywhere, but not too, too small if you want that big kind of hulky console look in your entertainment system. And also it goes for pretty cheap, giving you a lot of room to pick up the more important thing, which is the games. Before we get into some game suggestions, just a reminder of certain accessories you may need. For my content creator friends out here, allow me to introduce you to the HDMI splitter. You're gonna want this thing because the PlayStation 3 has built in high definition capture protection. So it's not like the 360 or really any game system nowadays where you can hook things up, record your gameplay, no problem. In systems like the PS4, the PS5, you have to manually go in and deactivate it. But the PS3 does not have that setting. So if you're buying this to start creating content, get yourself an HDMI splitter. It allows you to capture gameplay that way. Otherwise, there's things like the PlayStation Move. If that tickles your fancy, I never owned one, never want to own one. I'm not really interested in motion controls for my console games. And then just a little bit of a heads up if you're trying to really nickel and dime this approach here is that the power cable between the PS3, 4, and 5 is shared. So you can just buy the system, which will go for a little bit cheaper on places like eBay. But that's enough when it comes to the console suggestions, the models, the accessory breakdown. Let's get into some games, shall we? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if there's one thing that I can drill into this head of yours before you leave this video, if you are collecting for your PS3, there's just one lesson I need you to take away here, and it's this single word, collections. Collections, collections, collections. If there's anything you're gonna buy for your PS3, if you're trying to avoid a massive price hike at any point down the road, let it be these games you see right here in front of you. Such a big pile, we have to split it into two. Not all of these are PlayStation exclusive. You should be aware of that. I just like to have all of my collections in one big happy family. You'll see some in the pile here, Tomb Raider or Tom Clancy Splinter Cell. You can find these, for example, on the Xbox but many of these are only on PS3. This is why Back Compat went away on PS3. And also when we got a little bit of a sniff of the PSN going down for PS3 and Vita, these collections you see here were the first to not just go up, but skyrocket. I distinctly remember this game right here. Yes, the Jack and Daxter collection, remaster in HD. This game was at $25. When we heard, by the way, and it wasn't even official at that point, when we heard PSN might go down for PS3, this game went up to $80 instantly. So not only do I think they're really great for consolidating your collection, like instead of buying all the Killzone games, you have all three right here in one single case, two discs. That stuff is great. I think it's great to just save some shelf space, but also these give you a ton of value. And if you're a trophy hunter with a lot of nostalgia, they provide that too. For me, one of my favorites is right here, the Sly Collection. We actually just did a Sly 2 Band of Thieves retrospective. If you wanna go ahead and check that out, I'll have it linked in the description down below. But this collection here is one of my favorites. It's a trio of extremely easy platinum trophies. Keep in mind that the platinum trophy for the PS4, PS5 version that got re-released via emulation is actually a different platinum trophy from the one you get here in this collection. So you can really double dip if you love Sly as much as myself. It also is PlayStation Move compatible. There is a suite of mini games if you care about that sort of thing. Just wanted to shout it out in case my accessory bros and sis has cared about it. There's also Ratchet and Clank here. This includes Ratchet and Clank, Ratchet and Clank Going Commando, and Up Your Arsenal. What's very strange about the PS3 is they do have Ratchet deadlocked as an HD remaster there, but it never got a physical release and it never got brought to other systems. So it's just a digital re-release with trophies in HD stuck on the PS3. So you could go onto the PSN and download that if you so desire. Infamous Collection speaks for itself. It's two discs right here, and Absolutely Infamous is a must own. For those who have never played it, open world superhero game that gets really dark, and it's really about a light side and a dark side. There's two different stories with lots of choices. Things get really messed up. For me, as someone who loves Infamous 1 and 2, I found games like Second Son to be okay. Like not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but I found 1 and 2, and especially 2, to be absolutely incredible. So definitely pick these ones up. There's other ones here like Eco and the Shadow of the Colossus collection, 
This comes on a single disc. It does have reversible cover art. You may recognize this from our GameStop unboxing. And there's also Journey Collector's Edition here. It includes Flower and Flow. And I know a lot of people like these kind of indie style games. And you can find them all on one collection here on PlayStation 3. And this one was like about 15 bucks. And because you have all those exclusive collections, I find the third party ones worth owning on PS3 as well. So you have Prince of Persia, which includes Sands of Time, Warrior Within, and Two Thrones. You have Silent Hill HD Collection. This is the one I would say stay away from. This was picked up for complete box experience purposes for this channel. But if you're really looking for the true Silent Hill experience, I'm not joking when I say just go back to the original systems. The Silent Hill HD collection completely ruins key parts of those games, particularly on the visual front. And you definitely don't want to have that experience. So stay away from this if you are looking at Silent Hill with an eyebrow raise and a lot of intrigue. We have Splinter Cell here, which includes not just Splinter Cell, but Pandora Tomorrow and Chaos Theory in HD. And then Tomb Raider, which includes Legend, which also got a re-release on the PS4 and PS5 via that PS Plus subscription service. There's also Tomb Raider Anniversary and Underworld. So yes, tons of collections, as you can already tell. Again, if there's anything you can take away from this, it's buy these collections for your PS3. And yes, you may have noticed God of War was missing from those collections. That was intentional because what you'll see here is an interesting state of affairs for this franchise on PS3. You have God of War Saga, which includes five games. You have God of War Origins Collections, which is the PSP games remastered. So you have Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta. Then you have God of War Collection, which is one and two in a single collection. And then there's Ascension, which is still stuck on PS3 and is a very weird, different style God of War, which has multiplayer, by the way. I definitely don't think it's active nowadays, but it's a really weird experiment and marked a low point for Sony Santa Monica, but I remember playing it and kind of enjoying it. I don't know, guilty pleasure, but I'm also apparently the weirdo who really likes older God of War more than newer God of War. So sue me if you will, but this is the interesting situation here with God of War. Let me break it down for you. So God of War Saga is definitely the best bang for your buck, but the problem here is that you do have God of War 1 and 2 on disc and God of War 3. So you get three games in one, and then you have the remastered downloadable game voucher here, which has a downloadable code, and you'll see the time has expired to download it. So you're a little bit stuck when it comes to Origins Collection on Saga. What I would say, is you could also do just these two together, God of War Collection and God of War Origins Collection, but then you're missing God of War 3, you need to pick that up separately. So what I would say is if you want every God of War game in HD, go with Saga and Origins, because then you get 1, 2, 3, Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta. If you've not played the original God of War games, I know they're much more story driven in an emotional manner in the newer God of War games. And don't get me wrong, I don't hate them by any stretch of the imagination. Like I platinum the first one, I still haven't played Ragnarok yet, so maybe my opinion on those will change if I actually get to experience that. But look, the older God of War games were so important for the PlayStation 2, so, so, so important. You really cannot sleep on these. So please check them out if you have yet to. My personal favorite God of War game ever is God of War 3. I think it's so ridiculous, but so good. Like the God kills in that game are unhinged, insane. Like still some of my favorite memories in an action game ever. So I adore God of War 3 and that opening is still sick to this day. God of War Ascension again, is the lone PS3 God of War game that never got put in a collection or anything. So you'll have to add that to your shelves. And this is basically like an origin story for Kratos if you are interested in checking that out. Speaking of other games that are popular franchises, you have Ratchet and Clank, where we have Tools of Destruction, Into the Nexus, as well as Full Frontal Assault. I am missing in my physical collection, A Crack in Time. That is my favorite, funny enough, PS3 Ratchet and Clank game, and that does have trophy support. One thing you should be aware of if you're hunting games down physically on the PS3, we actually have a perfect example right in front of us, is how the banners would change as the system progressed. So this is how old PS3 games looked, and when they started to add trophy support, they got this new banner, and if you're ever wondering if a game has trophies, just check the back banner, and up here, you'll see trophies marked down. They'll also message, mention things like here, multiplayer, lobbies, matchmaking, message and friend invites, like They'll break down all those features, but if you're wondering if a game has trophies, this banner isn't always a kiss of death. There are games like Metal Gear Solid 4 that got a patch years later that have this similar style Sony Spider-Man font, 
um, and they got trophy support, but for the most part, it usually locks in like there's no trophies for this game. That was a pre-trophy era type of move from PlayStation. But the Ratchet and Clank games on PS3, it was a weird era, not gonna lie. I mean, Tools of Destruction and Crack in Time were more traditional Ratchet and Clank experiences. There was also Quest for Booty, but then there were games like Full Frontal Assault that you'll see here, which they break down in the back is explore the battlefield, defend your base, annihilate your enemies. And it, it was like a base defense game. It was not really what people were looking for in Ratchet and Clank, to say the least. Some of these games did have cross-buy, as you'll see here. So if you own the PS Vita, this was a benefit at the time. Again, with download vouchers and how they would expire, it's less of the case now. So that covers a lot of like the core franchises on PlayStation, collections, all that stuff. Now we get into the thick of exclusives, some you've maybe heard of, some you might not have. So speaking of games that I want to have trophies with, but they have the PlayStation Spider-Man font, that is Untold Legends Dark Kingdom. This was a launch game for the PS3. This was actually the first game I owned on my PS3, right next to Sonic 06, which I enjoyed a lot at the time, and Viking Battle for Asgard, which is still a game that I have nostalgia for, even though it's not very good. Anyway, Untold Legends was a PS2 franchise. They had Brotherhood of Blade and Warrior Within. These games, I thought were absolutely amazing. They were my Diablo growing up alongside games like Baldur's Gate, Dark Alliance, Champions Return to Arms, like those types of games uh, were so important to me. But Untold Legends was like the definitive one. And this was the console experience for it. And I always found it really good. I played it a lot. I definitely remember more fondly the action RPGs on PSP. I hope they get a re-release at some point down the line, but Dark Kingdom is one that you should not sleep on. Was really excited to finally be able to shout this one out. There's also fun, weird ones here like Dragon Guard 3. I don't know if this is really expensive nowadays, but I bought this sealed for $20. It's one of the few PS3 games to get this blue sort of banner on the front and sides. And Drakengard is a very slept on series that if you like Nier, you're gonna care about this because it's from the mind of Yoko Taro. It's another action oriented series, very bloody, very depressing, beautiful music. I will say Drakengard 1, I played that as a kid, low key kind of traumatizing. So yeah, buyer beware, these games get really serious and Drakengard 3 in particular actually sets up the Nier universe in one of its many endings if you're ever interested in seeing how that came to be, because again, the mind of Yoko Taro knows no limits. Now this one is subject to change, but right now I wanna throw it out there because we don't know what Konami's gonna do. It seems like they've heavily indicated more Metal Gear games are gonna be released in like a volume two collection. But for now, let's talk about Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots complete in box here. Uh, this one did get trophy support via an update. That's why I actually added it into my collection. I was like, oh, sweet, I can get trophies on it now. And I remember playing this game. It was my first Metal Gear game, just popping all the way to the end of the timeline here. And I really, really liked it. So this game, I think, has aged well in, in that regard. Like, the story is good, but, but this is kind of the pinnacle Kojima go make a movie type game because of the ending cutscene. So yeah, I'll let you figure that out for yourself, but definitely a good pickup for your PS3 because it was supposed to get an Xbox 360 copy, never did. This is not an exclusive, but I think it's best on PS3. So I want to just throw it in this pile. It is Mortal Kombat 9, the complete edition. So it comes with all the DLC on disc, but most importantly, as we pointed out in our Mortal Kombat retrospective, you'll see you get to play as Kratos. So you get a bonus character here. It does unfortunately mean you need to bite the bullet and have a greatest hits copy on your shelf. You're gonna have to break up all of those wonderful unified spines on your shelf to have this one included if you care about that stuff. But the best thing about this, again, all DLC on disc, all editions and skins on disc, plus Kratos, who's unique to the PS3 version. So I think this is the best place to have MK9. You could also get it on Vita if you so desire. Speaking of fighting games, including Kratos, we have PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. I wish PlayStation continued with this series. I really thought it was good. If you've not played Smash Bros, but PlayStation, let it be known that this is so worth your time. Unfortunately, can't really get the Platinum nowadays because a lot of online trophies were attached to it, but still just really a, a moment in time. Like, oh my God, they're actually doing it. They're taking all of their incredible mascots 
and they're gonna put them in a fighting game, have them face off, and finally, Smash Bros has a competitor. Why is this fascinating? Because it was amazing to see like, who's PlayStation gonna team up with to get stages done? And so you'd have like a Bioshock Infinite stage. I think people forget about that. Like the Big Daddy was one of the DLC characters. I don't know. I thought it was a wonderful celebration of PlayStation history. I would love to see them do it again, especially with all the new PlayStation mascots they have, like the Hunter from Bloodborne. You know, Nathan Drake, of course, was in this game, but like seeing an older version of him, Joel, Ellie, you know, I would love to see them embrace something like that, especially because now they're doing Astro Bot. So I think it'd be really cool to bring back PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. We didn't get a chance to shout this one out. It technically has a collection, but more of it like a sleeve that all three games go into. So I recommend them individually. And that is Resistance. In particular, Resistance 3 is my favorite. It does have PlayStation Move controls again, if you care about that sort of stuff. But Resistance is a phenomenal post-apocalyptic first-person shooting franchise with some really unique guns. As you'll see here on the cover, it's from Insomniac Games. Unfortunately, this franchise was abandoned after this entry here, but if you like how Ratchet and Clank approaches weapons in a really creative, crazy way, this game's a first-person shooter in a post-apocalyptic world that follows that same design philosophy, and it's incredible. What is PlayStation without SOCOM? Now, there are two SOCOM games on PlayStation 3. Funny enough, you'll actually see here on the cover, the Resistance 3 early access multiplayer beta was being promoted in this game, but there is also SOCOM Confrontation. Don't get that one. It's always online, multiplayer game. SOCOM 4 does include a story. It's more of a dude bro, third person shooter. Like, I don't know if y'all remember, old school SOCOM was really hardcore, really tactical. I found it difficult as a kid, but it was one of the most satisfying games I played growing up. There are other ones on PSP like Fireteam Bravo 1 and 2, but SOCOM 4 is available on PS3 as the lone single player offering for the SOCOM franchise. And I would love for this series to actually come back. I feel like PlayStation's kind of sitting on a gem with this one here, and I think the time is right. Sly Thieves in Time, gotta shout this one out. One of my favorite games on the PS3. This is the fourth entry in the Sly Cooper franchise, so you pick up Sly Collection in this. You got the whole story there. Unfortunately, it ends on a little bit of a unsatisfying note, we'll just say, but I adore this game. Feel like for some people it gets way too much hate on the story front, like an abundance way more hate on the story front. But when it comes to the characters, the way it plays with the Cooper timeline, it's absolutely brilliant. It comes from Sanzaru instead of Sucker Punch, but I think they did a wonderful job carrying the torch. Wish they could have done more Sly Cooper, but it ends here, unfortunately, Sly Cooper fans, but make sure you have this one in your collection. JRPG fans, I did not forget about you. We got two recommendations for you. First one is Tales of Exilia. You'll see here, I have the limited edition. There is Tales of Exilia 2. I found this game to be phenomenal. I distinctly remember before college, I was trying to fix my sleep schedule. It was my between my senior year and going into college. And I made the dumbest choice, but also the best choice ever. So I have a core memory with this game, which is, oh, it's a week before my first time in college. I'm going to stay up all night and beat this 40 hour game in a week. And just, I set this personal weird challenge for myself and I did it. I don't know why I did it, but I did it nonetheless. And yeah, I love Tales of Exilia, such an overlooked Tales game. Love the story, love the characters, love the universe, just really good stuff there. So Tales of Exilia should absolutely be in your collection if you like JRPGs. Twisted Metal is an iconic PlayStation franchise. This was sort of the attempt at rebooting it. I can't speak as authoritatively on this one because I have very little experience with Twisted Metal. I just know a lot of people love it. This game apparently is pretty good. And so if you wanna check it out for yourself, go ahead, really cheap pickup. Last suggestion here, White Knight Chronicles. This was a JRPG series that a lot of people didn't think was very good, but White Knight Chronicles 2 includes a remastered version of White Knight Chronicle 1, so why pick up the first one if you can get both in one right here? So White Knight Chronicle 2 is definitely worth a look at least into some reviews. See if the game mixes well with your personal tastes based on what people are saying online. And that'll do it, ladies and gentlemen. If you wanna buy a PS3 in 2024, I feel like that's enough that you need to know to get the ball rolling, and then you start digging from there. There are certain games that I don't own in my collection that I also wanted to shout out. One of them is Folklore. This was a launch PS3 title. It was also one of the first to go up in value when the PSN was apparently going down, but then it stayed at a higher value because I think a lot of people recognize like, hey, 
This is kind of a weird, different title. Maybe we should keep this at a higher price. People should really pay to get involved in this experience. So there are games like that, which were not mentioned in the more physical section of this video that I did want to call out. Otherwise though, that's enough for me. I wanna hear from you on what games you think I should be picking up and others should be picking up on PS3 so that we can all build our collection out together. Cause certainly there are gonna be ones that I've overlooked at some point down the line. So really keen to see what y'all have to suggest out there. Fire away, other than that, I'll catch you all in the next Retro Rebound. Peace.